Being a web motion and interactivity application, it should come as no surprise that there is a coding element to Adobe Edge. It is code that enables the looping and interactivity that is the focus of this lesson. The coding language used is JavaScript, and this can either be a good thing or a bad thing, depending upon your skill level. If you're a web developer, you're going to find the code panel in Adobe Edge to be a place where you can write your own custom code. If you're new to JavaScript or coding, you will discover the code snippets that come packaged with Edge will get you up and running in no time. Regardless of your skill level, let's take a look at how all of this works. I've opened a file called interactive.edge. The interactive edge file actually appears as interactive.html. What you need to understand is that the .edge format used by Edge is actually a container for the HTML file. And when it opens, we're going to go visit the Swiss Alps. You'll notice that it's a little banner ad with a button in it. And when we click the button, we're going to come over here and we're going to explore a small town in the Swiss Alps called Lauterbrunnen. And what we're going to do is set this up so that when the user rolls over this image here, some text appears in the info element, which is nothing more than an empty text box. So that's the plan. So let's get back to the start. Now to make all this happen, of course, you need code. And code can be added in a number of places. The first place where you can add it is right here in the window menu. There's a code panel. And when the code panel opens up, you'll see that there are elements already in play the stage, and even a preloader. But up here are the panel options, and you might want to take a look at these. So just click the icon, and you can, whether or not you wish to have the line numbers showing, that's not going to add anything to your code, but it will show you the line numbers, which is a good thing. You can change the font size inside the panel itself to small, medium, or large. I use large here simply because it's a screen-based presentation and it's good for you to see this code. And you can even include snippet comments if you so choose. Okay, let's close the uh, code panel. Now there are other places where you can find code. For instance, anytime you see a bracket in the elements panel, this will open up the code panel. So if you click on info, for example, you notice it opens up. Now, this is context sensitive. This is kind of neat because what it will do is it'll give you events that are tied to the selection. So the info box, which is that empty text box, can have click events, which are use the mouse, or because this application will also appear on a mobile space, you can also add touch events. Okay, we'll close the code panel here. Other places where you can find code are here in the timeline. There's always code there. And, of course, up here, open the actions for the whole project. Now, you see there are actions here. There's an actions layer. Now, these actions are based on the timeline. And let's take a look at how these work. And we'll use this to get us all started using the code panel. If you pull the playheads across, you'll notice that the movie just plays straight through. So what we want to do is loop the timeline. So get yourself over to the four second mark. I'm going to just get there using the scrub feature. There we are. And you can add what's called a trigger. These are triggers in here. So you can click on that. And you notice you roll over it is the little dot lights up. Another place where you can insert a trigger is in the timeline menu. Insert trigger. Okay, so we're at the four second mark, we're going to insert a trigger. And the trigger is going to basically say when the playhead hits this slot or this spot on the timeline, go back to the start of the timeline. So we'll just click here to insert a trigger. And all you need to do is just click the play snippet and add zero. And that will send it back to time zero. Now, the other thing we want to do is when we're here, because there's hardly anything to it, we want to stop the playhead at this point. So you just, again, put a trigger in here, right at the end of the timeline, and just click Stop. And that will stop the playhead dead in its tracks, right at the five-second mark. Now, we've got a bit of a problem, because if we come here, we want to use this button to navigate over here. Well, I'm looping. And then I've got to get to this frame. Well, here's a quick way of doing that. There's a feature built on the timeline called labels. And labels are nothing more than little markers that you would add. 
And you can also add labels right here in the timeline menu. So let's add a label. So just click the icon, label one, and we'll name it Swiss. So the plan is, is when we click this button, it's going to go to the Swiss marker or label. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in here. It's time to deal with the button. So we can come back to the zero point and we can click on the button. Now you can see that it's the start element and it's also highlighted here in the timeline. Let's add the code right here in the timeline and you'll see that it'll also be reflected in the elements panel. So we just click the open actions on this one and there are the click events. So we're gonna say when this button is clicked, play and we just say where we want it to play. So it's quote, Swiss quote. And what it will do is when this button is clicked, it will just basically go to that marker called Swiss. Okay, we can close the uh, code panel. And we got one final thing to do. This is a button, this is interactive. And what we need to do is have the cursor change when the user rolls over it. So they kind of know that it's interactive. If you come over to the properties panel, you can see that there's a cursor area. If you click that button, all the buttons that you can add to it are here and you can just select the pointer. So anytime the user rolls over the button or puts the cursor over the button, it will change to the pointer. We'll close that. Okay, let's see how everything's working. Command return on a Mac or control enter on a PC. This will flame up the browser. Yep, there's the button and if we click it, there we go, and you can see the stop action is in play here. Okay, we can quit the browser, and let's deal with the other half of the equation, which is over here. So the plan is real simple. By the way, I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit here. The plan is really simple. When the user rolls over this button, some text will appear in this element. So let's uh, deal with the picture. First thing we wanna do, change the cursor. So the user knows that it's interactive. And now what we're going to do is click on the valley element here in the timeline. And we're going to say when the mouse is over, we're gonna put some code in that info text box. So we just say set element text, that's the one you select. I'll just move this up so you can see it. And we gotta tell it what element it is, it is the info element. And we're gonna to have to tell it what text goes in that info element, and it is the views across the valley are stunning. Keep it all within quotation marks and that works. Now the other thing we have to be aware of is the fact what happens when the user rolls out. Well you can add extra events to your selections just by clicking the plus sign here. So on mouse out we're going to clear out the text. So we just reselect set element text, and this time we type in info, because it's the element that we want to affect, and what text goes in there? Nothing. So you just select the new text, press the delete key, and it's quote, quote, and that will leave us with nothing. So let's see how all that works. Command return, or control enter to test in the browser. And let's roll over, there's the text, roll off, it's out. Very good, okay, now what we're gonna do is set this button up here, exploring Lauterbrunnen to go to the Swiss tourism site. So we'll quit Firefox and we'll finish it up by selecting exploring Lauterbrunnen. And again, we're gonna add that pointer cursor to it so that the user knows it's interactive when they roll over it. And what we're going to do here is we're gonna come over here this time to the elements panel and add the code, and we're gonna say, on click, open URL. And the URL that we're going to go to is not adobe.com, it is myswitzerland.com forward slash en, so we get the English language version of the site. And we're going to go to Lauter, Oops, would help if I spelled it right. Lauterbrunnen.html. Close the code panel and let's see if that works. So we'll just test this again in the browser. 
Click to start. And it's opening up my Switzerland. And there we are in Lauterbrunnen, right here on the official website of Switzerland Tourism. Okay, we can quit Firefox. So what we've done in this lesson is quite a bit, actually. I've shown you where the code panel lives. You notice that you can get at the code anytime you see brackets. There's also triggers that you can add, which is code that's added to the timeline and controls the playhead. I've also shown you where the code panel also lives, right here in the window menu. And I've also shown you how the snippets work. And if you ever want to change a snippet, you just click once on the little code icon there and just make your changes to the item or the code.